All right. Well, uh, thanks for coming out today, uh, this afternoon on this uh, beautiful Friday. Uh, appreciate everybody taking the time. Um, it's an exciting time of year for Public Works. This is uh, the start of street construction season for us. Uh, um, we're officially kicking off our street construction uh, season this Monday uh, with the start of our 26th Street and Southeastern Avenue and Exit 5 uh, construction project. Um, with me today, I've got uh, Dina Knutson, our, our city project manager, and Travis Dressen with the uh, South Dakota Department of Transportation, the area engineer, and uh, Greg Branagh with d g Concrete Construction. Going to invite them up later on uh, to give a little bit of information about the project uh, in a little more detail. This is a joint project with the City of Sioux Falls and the Department of Transportation. It's a $37 million project and when it's completed it's going to have some significant uh, improvements to uh, this uh, critical east-west corridor here in Sioux Falls. Some of the major improvements we're going to be uh, completing here with this project include the widening of 26th Street and also with uh, expansion in the Southeastern Avenue intersection. We'll be working on uh, the exit 5 ramps there for I-229 and making some uh, realignments and some expansion there. And then also on 26th Street, we're going to be raising the road at Southeastern Avenue about 27 feet in the air and building a new overpass over the BNSF Railroad uh, to get rid of that at-grade crossing and uh, delays a lot of commuters run into when the trains are coming through town. Combined, all these improvements are going to have a, a real big impact and uh, greatly improve the, the traffic flow in this area. The first phase, which is starting Monday, uh, we'll be working on 26th Street. We'll be reducing it to one lane in each direction. Uh, at, during this first phase, we're not closing Southeastern Avenue or Yeager Road or any of the interchange ramps, um, but this is a two-year project and coming up, you know, as we evolve through the pro project, we are going to have some additional closures. So, you know, please stay informed with the project. We'll be making announcements as those things come up. Over the course of this project, um, traffic capacity is gonna be restricted in this area. You know, we're going down to one lane in each direction and um, so there will be delays. Uh, we encourage drivers to look for alternate routes during construction. Um, you know, some of the suggested routes we have are 12th Street and 57th Street to go east to west, and also using uh, um, Sycamore and Cliff Avenue to get around. Um, w along these routes and, and other of these east side streets, our traffic team is going to be monitoring those during the construction project uh, to look at how traffic is flowing and we will be monitor, uh, modifying the, the timings on, on any signals that we can to help to improve that traffic flow as, as much as we can. But do recognize there's a lot of traffic that is going to be finding alternate routes so there are going to be delays um, and, and we're, we're just going to try and minimize it the best we can. So I said, you know, we have, we have almost 28,000 drivers that use 26th Street on a daily basis. That's a lot of traffic that's going to be uh, finding alternate routes. Um, so it, we do ask for people's patience. Um, you know, these east, east side streets are just going to be congested for, for the next couple years. And, um, you know, patience, uh, planning ahead is, is going to save a lot of frustration. There are some ways the public can help. You know, we, we do have some suggestions. You know, one, one thing we uh, encourage people is to work with your employer to see if you can adjust your work schedule. So maybe you can leave a little earlier in the day or a little later in the day to try and avoid those really peak times of traffic. Um, some other things, you know, we really encourage people to, to try carpooling, you know, We've got a fantastic bike trail system in Sioux Falls. Uh, if you can bike to work, that's another way to, to get some, some vehicles off the road. 
and, and also Sioux Area Metro still serves, uh, is going to be serving the east side of town. Uh, you know, encourage you to, to look at our public transportation. So any, anything we can do to minimize the, the vehicles on the roadway is going gonna, is gonna to help. So now I'm going to turn it over to Dina Knutson, and, and she's our project manager with the City of Sioux Falls, and she's going to give a few more details on the, on the city's portion of the project. As Josh was saying, uh, uh, 26th Street uh, will be down to two lanes starting on Monday morning. Um, exit 5, Southeastern Avenue and Jaeger Road will still remain open for the time being, but they will be closing um, in the near future, just not next week. Um, no left turns will be allowed off of northbound I-229, uh, ramp from 26th Street. Northbound I-229 access will have to be taken at 10th Street or Cliff Avenue. Uh, no left turns will be allowed onto 26th Street from northbound I-229 ramp exit. Uh, only right turns only. Uh, the work that you'll be seeing next week, traffic control will start to be set up. Uh, bridge demolition will begin next week. Um, sawing and removals of the existing roadway. Uh, they'll also start hauling in dirt uh, for the abutment ends and some widening uh, of 26th Street. So please be cautious of trucks movements turning and around. Um, just be cautious of the construction activity. Um, once the parks, uh, Rotary Park is the, our nearest uh, park. So once the park is open uh, for the season, um, access to the old or the east side um, you can't drive into it, that, that access will be closed. You will be able to access it from the new pedestrian bridge uh, that was built last summer. Uh, so you'll have to go from the west side. But there again, no left turns will be allowed into Rotary Park. You'll have to have a right turn to get in. Uh, the bike trail too will remain open as it is in place today for a while. Uh, we'll be, in the next few weeks, we'll be placing a large box culvert uh, so you'll be able to use the bike trail through the box culvert. Uh, but I do exercise caution with you. Uh, it is through a construction site, uh, so there'll be, there'll be extra construction activity around, so please use caution. Um, within the next several weeks, uh, Burlington Northern uh, is requesting that we close 26th Street to, for two days to allow them to install um, their crossing arms uh, on their railroad track. Um, more information will come out for that, um, more specifics, but uh, it's just kind of a peek. Um, there again, I guess uh, driving through the construction zone, there's going to be a lot of activity with the construction itself and the driving public. Uh, just please use caution, drive slow, and um, uh, it'll be a great project. Um, next, we'll have Travis talk a little bit more about the DOT side. Good afternoon. Uh, so this week we did mark the kickoff of the Exit 5 reconstruction along with the 26th Street reconstruction through the, through the Southeastern Avenue intersection. This really is the culmination of a lot of planning and preliminary engineering work that took place back since 2012. Uh, with this, it is a joint project between the South Dakota Department of Transportation and the City of Sioux Falls. And I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize project staff both from the DOT and from the city to bring this project together and as we carry it through to construction in the next two years. Uh, this relationship will be important. We have a lot of interchanges around the city of Sioux Falls. Uh, we'll also be making improvements in the future at I-29 and 41st Street and also the service interchanges on I-229 at Benson Road, Minnesota Avenue and Cliff Avenue. So we have more projects of these types uh, to come along. So the work on I-229 itself uh, will be constructing a new bridge on the south side of the existing structure. Uh, traffic itself will be reduced to one lane at times on 229 and we expect congestion on 229. Uh, towards the first part of May, we'll be closing the northbound on-ramp to 229 and that will remain closed uh, through construction of the first year, through a portion of the first year. Uh, towards the middle part of June, we'll be closing the ramps on the west side of the interchange, uh, so no access will be onto the interstate um, from 26th Street. 
Uh, during construction, we also have a series of overnight closures. We have 16 days set up in our contract to close 229 between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. Uh, for various overhead structure work at the exit 5 bridge. Uh, during that time, traffic will be detoured to the 10th Street interchange to the north and the Cliff Avenue interchange to the south. Those won't be consecutive nights. Uh, we expect some of them will be, depending on the type of work. <clears throat> Uh, the project itself will be mainly the reconstruction of the, the bridge on the south side of the interchange. The interchange ramps will also be placing a high friction surface treatment on I-229 between Cliff Avenue and 26th Street. This will be very similar to the surface treatment on 229 to the north of here at 18th Street. It's been shown to be a very uh, effective uh, method of reducing runoff the road crashes, especially during wet weather and uh, uh, winter conditions. Uh, starting the first week of April, we'll be installing uh, intelligent work zone technology on this project on I-229. That, that system is, is called the Q Detection System. So there will be sensors along I-229 between Western Avenue and 10th Street. Those sensors will uh, be continually monitoring traffic speeds. They'll be detecting stopped or slowed traffic on the interstate. Those messages will get relayed to message boards on the interstate to give drivers real-time information about what kind of traffic conditions they can expect as they approach the work zone. Along with that, we also have digital regulatory speed limit signs uh, tied to that system. As traffic begins to slow, speed limits will be reduced, so traffic isn't coming up on a work zone at high speeds, therefore reducing the potential for high-speed crashes on the interstate. As a reminder, these are uh, regulatory speed limits, so they are enforceable speed limits, so please be conscious of that. Uh, it's a couple tips for drivers. If you have the ability, as Josh said, to be able to leave your home or work a little bit early or a little bit later than usual, that may help. Also, please be patient. This is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be tough from a traffic standpoint for the next two years, but the improvements that are being made uh, over the course of the next two years will serve drivers for decades to come. And with that, I'll turn it over to Greg Brano with D&G Construction. <clears throat> Greg Brano, D&G Concrete. We're the prime contractor on the project. Keep in mind that the two key words that we've talked about, these first three people have talked about, are caution and patience. Uh, when you're trying to put 28,000 or fewer cars, even if some people find an alternate route through two lanes, head-to-head -head traffic is going to be slow. And we've got 21, 22 contractors on this job. We've got 22 subcontractors and our crews that are going to be out there working. We all have to share that same head-to-head -head traffic to get from one side of the river to the other. So you're going to see a lot of construction traffic out in, driving traffic during certain times of the day. Hopefully we can minimize that by doing our crossings at night and in the early in the morning before the traffic comes out there. But it's going to be a slow go. Caution, patience is going to be key, and obviously the traffic safety, but more than that, our, our own workers' safety. Uh, we're going to be out and working right next to traffic. I mean, we're within one foot or two feet sometimes of traffic, so you keep in mind that those workers all want to go home at night and see their families no different than you do when you're driving a car. Uh, Dina talked about our schedule for next week, uh, depending, of course, on the floods, but we plan on uh, switching everything on Monday. So there'll be head-to-head -head traffic from Jaeger Road to Southeastern. Southeastern stays open. Jaeger Road stays open. The on and off ramps uh, northbound will stay open. The only limits are going to be that you're going to be head-to-head -head on the north side of the road. And uh, obviously when you're head-to-head, -head, we're going to be at two less lanes of traffic, so we're going to try and put everybody into two lanes. Uh, there's going to be a lot of work on the bridge going on in the next two weeks. I advise the the traveling public not to gawk when you're in traffic. Don't be looking at what's going on with the workers over there tearing down that bridge because the car in front of you is going to stop and you're going to run into the back of it. So uh, hopefully you can keep your mind on driving, keep focused when you're going through the construction site. Like I said, I don't want any of my workers and I don't want you to get hurt either. And uh, certainly it's going to be a long two years for traffic, but at the end of the day, I think, <clears throat> I think this project is one of the most exciting projects I've ever been involved in in Sioux Falls. I really look forward to it. I think they've done great planning. 
I think the engineers that designed this thing have done a great job. Uh, it's going to be a challenge to get it done in two years, but hopefully uh, the weather is good this year compared to last year, and hopefully we get going full speed here now that the, the weather is kind of straightened out and the, the snow is gone and the frost is coming out of the ground and we're removing trees and we're, we're, making, uh, we're making headway this week and next week it really, really, really gets going fast. So you're going to see a lot of activity next week and uh, drive safe, remember caution and remember patience. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. And, and everybody, um, you know, it, like Greg said, this is a really exciting project for us, and it's a really big project. Uh, we really want everybody to keep informed about what's going on there. And, and the easiest way to do that is to go to the, the, the city's website, SiouxFalls.org. We've got a project webpage uh, for this project dedicated to provide updates to the public. Just go to our website and go through the uh, construction projects link, and it'll take you right there. And, and on that web page, we'll be keeping our regular updates, but you can also sign up for regular updates on that website as well. Uh, you, you enter your email address, and you can get uh, biweekly updates on the project delivered right to you. So it's a great feature we have, and, and hopefully it helps keep people informed. We also want uh, feedback from the public. If they're seeing things that aren't working right, um, you know, potholes, traffic signals, whatever that might be a, that might be uh, a challenge for for drivers on this east side. A uh, couple ways you can provide some feedback to us on that project webpage. We've got all of the project team contact information posted out there, so you can uh, call or email them to let them know what's going on out there. And one of the other things is the, that you can use to provide updates on not just this project, but uh, the city in general is our new uh, web application or the mobile app, the, the City of Sioux Falls um, C-Click Fix app. Uh, it's a great tool to provide information on this project or anything else that uh, you want to uh, give some feedback to the city. So with that, once again, I want to thank everybody for coming out here. I really appreciate the, uh, the interest, and we'll open up to questions for either me or anybody else that spoke. We are, uh, we are monitoring the, the flow, just like uh, we are everybody else in town. I've been in contact with our, our, our flood management team. Uh, you know, I'll direct, I'll direct you to them for specifics, but what they're telling us is the forecast has been getting a little better and a little better. Uh, the good news is the, the first work we're going to be doing is up on the roadway. And, uh, you know, every indication we have right now is the flooding won't reach 26th Street. It'll, it'll be lower. So uh, I, I think we can, we can work on the project. Uh, we just won't be able to get down to start working on the foundations for the new bridges right away. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be monitoring the, the flows and, and uh, mo adjusting the construction schedule to, to fit. You know, that's, that's a good question. Um, this is, a, I've, I've mentioned it before, this is a really vital east-west corridor. And right now, this intersection and the interchange is kind of a bottleneck. We, we recognize that every day there's there's delays for the traveling public. You know that delays uh, relate to user costs. You know, so if we can min minimize those delays, get traffic flowing more, you know, it's just going to help in revitalize this this side of town. <laughs>